judgment in the appeal would bring on the application of Barclay and another and the Secretary of State for Justice and the Lord Chancellor. Lady Hale will explain the judgment of the court. When can and should the courts of England and Wales interfere in the legislative process of any of the Channel Islands? The Channel Islands are not part of the United Kingdom. Unlike Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, they do not send representatives to the UK Parliament, nor have they ever been colonies, settled or conquered by the British. They are crown dependencies, so-called because their link is with the Queen, who is successor to the Dukes of Normandy, to whom the islands belonged. Even so, they are not separate states in international law. The United Kingdom is responsible for their defence and international relations. The UK Parliament can pass laws which extend to the Channel Islands, but conventionally does not do so on internal matters without their consent. Jersey, Guernsey, Alderney and Sark have their own representative legislatures which pass their own laws, but these do not become law until given the royal assent. This is done by an order made by Her Majesty in Council on the advice of a committee of the Privy Council, which in turn is advised by the Lord Chancellor. The present case arises out of a disagreement between the Barclay brothers, who have property on Sark, and the Sark legislature. In 2009, they succeeded in a judicial review of the advice to give royal assent to the reform Sark Law 2008 on the grounds that the law was, in certain respects, incompatible with the European Convention on Human Rights, an international treaty to which the United Kingdom is party. The Reform Sark Amendment No. 2 Law, 2010, was passed as a result. This, too, was challenged by the Barclay Brothers in the same way, on the ground that it was incompatible with the European Convention. They succeeded on one point in the Administrative Court, the Lord Chancellor, the Committee and the Privy Council have appealed to this court. They argue that the European Convention has been given effect in the law of the Bailiwick of Guernsey, of which Sark is part, by the Human Rights Bailiwick of Guernsey Law 2000. This is closely modelled on the United Kingdom's Human Rights Act. In particular, it does not allow the courts of the bailiwick to strike down laws validly passed in the bailiwick on the ground that they are incompatible with the convention. As in the United Kingdom, the most the courts can do is make a declaration of incompatibility which has no effect upon the continuing validity of the law unless and until the legislature does something to correct it. It would subvert that democratically chosen scheme for the courts of England and Wales to strike down such a law by another route. The Supreme Court unanimously accepts that argument and allows the appeal. It does not rule out the possibility that there might be rare occasions when it would be appropriate for the UK courts to interfere in the legislative process of the islands, either by invalidating the advice to give royal assent to a law or by invalidating the advice not to give royal assent to such a law. But this is not such a case. The court should not have entertained this challenge, nor should they have entertained the previous one. But in that case, this argument wasn't made. I should add that the Barclay brothers do not appear before the Supreme Court to defend their victory in the court below, but we have been greatly assisted by the arguments of the neutral advocates to the court and by the intervention of the Attorney General of Jersey and the States of Guernsey. The court is now adjourned.